Hello, and welcome to my gothic grotto, where I talk about some of my favorite spooky, witchy, queer, and crafty things. I'm Thorn, I use he, him, his, and this is episode one of the Midnight Ballroom pod- podcast. I hope that I timed the intro right in my head. I can't remember how fast the music I chose for it is, but we'll deal with that in post. So, what is this podcast? Well, it's it's a casual podcast. I I wanted to start a YouTube channel where I talk about things that I like, and I couldn't pick just one thing to like narrow it down. So I narrowed it down to four things and I'm proud of myself because that was hard. (laughs) Spooky, witchy, queer, and crafty. And we'll get into what each of those are in more detail later. And so the other thing I want to do is tell some stories about my life, especially my pagan experience. Um, I, I am pagan like my pagan witchy side of my life. Um, in verbal form, because I also have a blog, which I'll link down below and, you know, tell you more about where to find me. Um, I also have a blog where I tell those stories in written form, but um, I don't really get to just add the nuance and the expression as much as in verbal, so that's something I wanted. It's coffee break time. One sec. This mug, which I will not bring right up to the camera because she is full of hot coffee. And I have equipment is a mermaid from um, a, a mermaid mug from Cracker Barrel. Oh no, I spilled. That's fine. <laughs> Not that hot, but you know. Um, delicious death ri- death death wish dark roast, which I'm almost out of, sadly. Trying to convince my mom to buy us more as a household. Because someday I will have my own income and I will budget for Death Wish, but not today is not that day. Hopefully soon. Anyway, so <laughs> So yes. I have my coffee, I have my my mug from from Cracker Barrel. I don't live in Cracker Barrel country. I live in California, but I have lots of um, re- relatives who either are in Kentucky or were from Kentucky at some point, and that is prime crack- Cracker Barrel country. So I was visiting them this summer and got that mug. And I also got my auxiliary mug. I say aux- auxiliary because I, I used it to fill the second half of the French press. <laughs> I I made coffee in a French press just now and I filled half of it in that mug and the other half in another mug because I didn't want to get up to get creamer because I can't drink coffee without creamer um, in the middle of the show. So this one also came from Cracker Barrel and you can't really see but it says pink hair don't care. No, it says unicorn hair, don't care. Sorry. And it's a pink thermos with the unicorn, like a cartoon unicorn covered in sparkles, just prancing around like, I'm fabulous. And there's nothing, there's nothing you can do about it. Also, by the way, I have a stammer or stutter I have all my life. And I've made this, made the decision to not edit any of that out. Not just because it's more work, but also like on a, 
ideological basis because it's important for people who stutter to know that we have a voice and we're it's worth while for people to to listen to us so thank you for bearing with me i don't think i'll get stuck too badly because it's not as bad as it was as a kid but it still shows up sometimes What am I doing next? Oh yeah, that's what my show notes are for. Okay. <laughs> I wrote show notes, but it's been a while. Um, oh, that's right. Next is Who Am I? Um, you might have seen me elsewhere on the internet, such as on the blog I mentioned. Um, and I'll put my links down below in particular, hi to my Zoom and Discord friends. I'm just going to pretend I'm talking to you if I get nervous, because that, that helps. Um, and my brief summary of other places you can find me is my blog, my WordPress, WordPress blog, Starstruck Awanev. That's a Welsh word. Um, Oh, and if, if the captions aren't capturing things, I'm planning to go back in a couple days after this uploads, and I think I can edit them manually because I want it to be as accessible as possible. I've never done that before, but I think I can. Um, if not, I'll leave a note <laughs> in the editing or something and try to figure out a different solution if I can. Um, and then if I have something on screen, I'll try to describe it, like I've been doing with my mugs. Um, pa pausing because I'm like, should I do that with a background? I don't know. <laughs> this is a mysterious scythe made of tin foil, which I've had for years. Yes, that is a prop behind me. It was part of the Halloween costume and I have some plushies in the background and lovely sparkly spiderweb fabric over some of my personal stuff, <laughs> like medicine cabinet things. I got that from Joann's. So, and I have some like, I wanna say branchy trees, like on Jade the Libra's channel. But yeah, they're like sparkly white branchy trees and um, black roses because black roses are my favorite thing ever. They're like my, um, I, I decided a long time ago they were kind of my symbol because it's just cool to have a personal emblem. I'm not saying that no one else can have them, just like for me, they're, they represent what I most love in life, so like in terms of aesthetic, sense of beauty, that mysteriousness. So um, I've decided to make them a big part of my branding. Oh, and this is my incense, assorted incense in this silver container. I was looking for the lid the top, this little, has a crystal on it, and it, it's a stopper, but obviously since the incense is sticking out, it, there's no stopper on it right now. So, wow, that was a tangent. <laughs> so, Starstruck Awanib is my WordPress blog where I talk about my experiences as a pagan, specifically a queer trans dedicant of the god Gwynapanid. Um, more about him later, of course. My my friends know, I never shut, shut up about him. And my other YouTube channel under Thorn Silver Holly Song, which should be linked to this one, but by the time it's up, I tried to do that beforehand, but I wasn't able to possibly because there's no... Um, no content on this channel yet, except now there is because of this video. And then I do have my 
thirst picks my my Etsy and Redbubble stores, which are collectively called thirst pixels, which is for um, pixel art pinups, basically. Yes, that's a thing. Um, just like cute, queer, gothy fantasy art that often has boobs, so like it is not safe for work usually. But um, it's the Etsy store has downloadable cross stitch patterns, and the Redbubble has stickers and things. There aren't as many things on that one yet because it takes so much work to make a to go from a pixel image to a big image that I can use for Redbubble merch. And I have to do a lot of screenshotting and then piecing piecing together in GIMP multiple times. And GIMP is the image program I use. And just making sure that it's all lined up correctly. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. So that's why there's not as many yet. But I, I hope to get more of them on there soon. So... Oh yeah, then I just have, I do have a Patreon. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it now that I have a YouTube channel. Like I would, I am going to keep blogging, but I'm like, maybe the perks will change or like add. I don't have many patrons right now, so it seems like a good time to change things up if I was going to. But of course, that's also subject to like what people want. I, I, I was going to say, I feel like it's a little bit weird for me to, for me to assume that I'm going to get enough people to like fans of this channel to get patrons but then I had this thought yeah you're you, you probably shouldn't self um deprecate cuz <laughs> I'm trying to stop doing that so yeah anyway that's the hope and plan uh and I'm just looking at my my notes then ooh I have band camp I'm, as I mentioned earlier, I'm a, I'm a queer pagan mu mu musician. Well, I mentioned my music channel, um, and I'm working on a new album that's about to be released, which tells a story um, that recently happened to me. I'll, I'll get more into that later, but um, so I'm excited about that. I do have a couple albums on Bandcamp, and I... I'm in the process of uploading them to YouTube, the, my two most recent ones, so I just have more uh, more of an audience. And f for one thing, I want people to be able to access this music, especially fellow um, devotees of Gwyn. I, I always shorten Gwyn Apneed's name to Gwyn because it's just what I do. And um, if I were in Wales and knew a ton of Gwyns, I might not do that. But then again, I am pretty close to this Gwyn specifically, so yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> so the, the other reason <laughs> besides wanting people to access my music is that I want people to know it exists in case they want to buy it. So yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> Um, and right now the, now the proper intro to me, um, I use he, him, his pronouns. My name's Thorn, short for Thorn Sil Silver Holly Song. It's a name I use in pagan and musical and gen generally online spaces because it was given to me in a spiritual context as a name to use, so I'm like, yeah, that that's awesome. And I'm a gay non-binary trans man, that's the short version. I've been on T for about three years now, wow. And just had top surgery last September on the feast day of my patron god, which is was not planned. We we celebrate his feast day um, September 29th. So they offered me that date and I was like, that's a sign. Okay. I will take it. Cool. Um, 
and I'm 31. I probably don't look it, but I am. It's very important to me that I'm an I'm an adult, damn it. Um, for fun and not fun reasons, it's important to me. <laughs> take me seriously. I mean, if you want to, I, I don't take myself too seriously, but just like I'm referring to things like, you know, some of the infantilization that happens in certain spaces. Um, right, as you might have guessed. I have um, ADHD. I was diagnosed earlier, early last year, I think. And <laughs> that made so many things make sense about my life. But also, late last year, I realized another part of my neurodivergence. I'm also aut um, autistic. So I have that combo. And I have not yet been formally diagnosed with that, but I'm comfortable comfortable in um, enough with that um, to to identify myself with that community because it explains so much. And like I've I've thought a lot about oh what's what's going on with me? I have all these sensory things. I have face blindness. I have like weird things happen to me sometimes, like, what's going on? And once I actually learned more about what autism is, and also learned about the, the, the movement of, um, I'm going to stutter on when I try to say this, autistic positivity, and just like the idea that not only is self, self-diagnosis self valid, but self-recognition is valid, because um, to me, I, I really like the idea of neurodivergence being similar to being queer. Like, you just kind of recognize yourself as such. Um, that's, that's my thoughts. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how, how political and, like, freedom and... Re <laughs> Re revolutionary anti-capitalist I want to get right out the gate. I mean, it's a thing, but I'm, I'm not going to go into that too much. It's just like, you know, that's where I stand. Um, freedom as in, like, from um, oppression and stuff. It's, I, I don't mean it, like, as any kind of American um, indi um, individualist exceptionalism type thing. If you didn't get any of those words, that's fine. We're just going to move on. Um, all oh right. This one has a, this next point has a slight um, trigger warning for various kinds of abuse. I'm just going to briefly mention it. Um, so I'm, I'm a survivor of growing up in a fundy church. Um, fun, fundy as in fun, fundamentalist, um, evangelical, which was, had very strong culty tendencies, at least, and also more recently a survivor of an uh, um, abusive marriage, which I fled last, not last summer, summer of 2020. It was a year, <laughs> for reasons both global and personal, and... So I've been in that healing process for a while. And that's actually the story that the album is going to tell. The story of how I fled with the help of my, my patron god and healed from that. Um, I'm currently living in my parents' house. Um, my gothic grotto is kind of a, just a portioned off section of their living room. I am right next to the piano, which is nice. But like, that's one reason. There are many. <laughs> But I'm looking forward to moving out as soon as I am able to, like, and continue rebuilding my life. But I don't know for sure when that'll be, but I'm, I'm, I'm hoping soon. Planning, planning to move up a little bit north to the Bay Area where I have some queer pagan friends, which will be awesome. So, um... Uh,
Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and mention, um, besides all of my online platform, like, small business type things that I'm doing, um, I'm also trying to learn to code, which is really fun, actually. I'm learning JavaScript and hoping that that can be a career path for me, at least for a while, until I... And, until like it it may become poss possible to do things that I really want to to do and like earn a living from that but I I'm also really interested in coding and <laughs> not that I don't want to do it but just like to like be self-employed kind of as a content creator like that would be really cool but I I have to like I'm, I'm trying to be practical for right now and I and learning JavaScript is so fun, especially since I get to do it in the processing or P5 environment. Um, I'm learning from some of the the videos from the Coding Train channel. I'll link that down below. It's a, it's a way that really works with my brain and my... Um, since, since you basically draw pictures or create um, um, animations then it, it really appeals to my um, artist nest. <laughs> so, yeah. Let's see. Oh, right. So now we, we get to talk about the keywords. And as a reminder, there's spooky, witchy, queer, and crafty. So I have a little section for each of them. But first, coffee break. Keyword one, spooky. I have always loved different sub subcultures, mainly goth and gothic Lolita. Um, I the previous Midnight Ballroom was a blogspot blog with. It was specifically for the um, for gothic lo gothic lo Lolita fashion, especially as like a an aesthetic and a lifestyle more than simply clothes. Like I was like, yeah, I'm a lifestyler because I I come to this from the goth subculture where it's like for me at least it's all encompassing. It's just the way I interact with the world and what I see as beautiful. So, um, and speaking of, um, the spooky aesthetic or style is just so important to me and, um, like, it was my self-expression ex when I had very few ways of expressing myself as a queer trans kid who didn't know that I was any of that and as a person in a very um, controlling church which was giving me active trauma at the time <laughs> um, and as a um, undiagnosed excuse me an undiagnosed neurodivergent person and just all of that and just, just like finding this particular type of beauty that really spoke to me. And I'm just like, yeah, it's, it's the thing I love most. Why wouldn't I, I, I pursue it hard? Like just in terms of like how I want things to look around me. Just, I, I want things to look spooky and romantic and darkly ethereal, like all of that. And um, of course, I've always loved ha Halloween. Um, and currently it's sacred to me in several ways, not only because I I love it. Like it's, it's sacred in that sense of it's a thing that I love and that makes me happy. So it's sacred just for that. But also in my spiritual path, 
it's sacred because it's also Nos... Um, I celebrate it as um, Nos... Nos... Nos Kalen Geav, um, which means the eve of winter in Welsh. And I'm, I'm not Welsh myself, so, and I'm not a native speaker or even a very advanced learner yet. So, like, take what I say with a grain of salt. Um, and, and please know that I'm talking from the point of view of, of a specific pagan um, tr tradition or path. So this is how I use it. Um, it may not represent the whole of like a modern Welsh culture. So, um, so I, I ce celebrate Halloween also as that. It's kind of like Samhain, which everyone knows, except it is specifically October 31st. Like it's, it's, it's not, um, is not really, as, as far as I know, it's not really a, um, nebulous date. It's just like that day because um november 1st would be considered the first day of winter and in my pagan path that is when my patron god who's the king of winter or at least that's how how i know and um, honor him um wakes up slash resurrects <laughs> i i joke that he's a vam vampire <laughs> Um, from his deathly sleep during the summer and comes to this world to out of fairy or um, Anun or the other world to bring winter to us. And he leads the wild hunt on that night. And that was also the night when I um, did, did, did my vows of... Um... <laughs> Sorry, I, I hate when I stutter on important things. But... That's when it happens. But I made my my lifelong vows of um, dedication to him on that on that night, um, October thirty first, two thousand nineteen. And um, five months later, I realized that you know retroactively we can consider that our wedding. Also, full disclosure, I am a god spouse, so. Um, deeply in love with him in both, um, like religious, devotional, and romantic and sexual ways. So, yeah. Um, and I, I feel like we've already gotten into the second keyword, but it, it is witchy. And originally, my keyword was Gwyn for obvious reasons. But I was like, well, people aren't going to know what I mean, but like, that is the secret other keyword <laughs> for this section. Um, so I've been talking a lot about things that are like very mystic, very mystical and spiritual probably, and I get that's not everyone's jam, but please know that I'm, um, I'm only talking about my own experience and my own gnosis like if if something is gnosis which means i'm i learned it or found it out through some spiritual way that i can't prove to you or or say oh it's there in the in the his, historical text that i um that i will always try to um mention that um i'm not like i'm certainly not here to try to convert anyone like you know different gods or paths call the different people and on the other hand i am also not here to defend my um the beliefs you're you're free to take them or leave them but like if you're here like this is a part of my life so just be aware of that um and if you're curious about more about who Gwyn is. Um, I always recommend the blog of fellow devotee Lorna Smithers. Um, her blog is from Penaverdant, and I'll I'll link it down below. 
Um, she has a lot of good posts about him, both in a um, devotional and like historical slash lore or folk folklore context. And then I I write a lot about him too, but that's mostly from personal. Like I feel like mine is a lot more just from personal um, experience. Speaking of, I do what's called God God phoning pre pretty casually, so you'll you'll hear me say, "Oh yeah, this uh, uh, the other day, so and so said said this to me." And what I mean is, it's kind of like an interactive form of prayer, except it's not always when I'm sitting here like waiting to hear just or meditating or something sometimes i'm just like doing dishes and i'm chatting with my gods except like i'm kind of listening for what they're they would say coming into my mind and i've it's it's a learned skill i've i actually started practicing how to do that as a christian as a child because my mom taught me how to listen for god's voice so um yeah, p people of all different faiths do it. Um, also, people of all different faiths have romantic or um, sexual connections with gods and spirits, too. So, it's it's not a new thing. Um, so... Right, some of, some of my specific pagan paths, as, as you might have guessed, um, I'm a Brythonic or Welsh polytheist. Brythonic means pre-Roman Britain, or there are several modern nations under the Celtic umbrella, which would count as Brythonic. Um, and <laughs> recently I've gotten pulled <laughs> into the direction of ancient Crete of all people by Gwen. He's like, yes, I'm also over here. And so that's a branch of paganism known as modern Minoan paganism. And I'll link that too. And in that context, I'm, I also walk some paths. Um, and it's hard to kind of balance them, but I do my best. <laughs> but yeah, some of, some of the, um, I'm also, I also identify as a witch and um, awanid. That that's a Welsh word for which which I define to mean in um, inspired one, or in the context I'm using it, it's kind of um, sorry, <laughs> got distracted, ADHD. Um, it's um, a divinely inspired poet and or spirit worker or like both. So those are the two sides of that. And there are some there's some really good um, writing about modern, like the modern um, Awanid path that I can link, particularly in an anthology called the the deep music, or there's also a website on the Awen Ak Awenid, which means Awen and Awenid um, in Welsh. So, um, yeah, I think that's all of um, the witchy keyword for now. I will probably. I'll have more to say, say say on it later, but like that's the general thing. Um, third keyword, queer. I gave the elevator pitch of my own queerness, gay, non-binary, trans man. But it relates to everything I do, so I'll definitely bring it up more. Um, and I do consider my um, neurodivergence to be part of my queerness. I just realized I forgot to turn on my ring light this whole time. <laughs> Let me see if it looks better. 
because it is pretty bright, which is nice. I actually like that better. Okay. That's why I got the ring light. That's okay. <laughs> it's episode one, you know? So, my, the, the labels I use are important to me, and I use them because they feel right, but also everything I do, especially in my spirituality, just like queers everything, it's it's all a mishmash kind of um and in the future i i feel like future story times could be like how did i realize i was trans or what like how how does my orientation fit in with and and gender fit in with my spiritual path because it does kind of in entwine um and the non-binary part which is more complicated i'm specifically by gender but like mostly like i i identify as male and as a man prime primarily and that that's like the the baseline and, and what i want to show the outside world so um I've, I've always, um, I always had a thing where I just loved men with long hair. I didn't know why, but I was like super invested in them having long hair and would get so offended when they'd cut it. And now I get to be the man with long hair. I am, I'm holding up my, my hair, which is quite long. So that's cool. <laughs> um, crafty, right. This is the fourth keyword. Um, I think the alternate version of it was creative, but I've just gone with crafty because, yeah. Well, I'm very excited about this part. Well, all of them, but this one has um, tangible things to share. And I have some finished objects because I I crochet a lot. So I have some finished objects and some whips. Work in that means work in progress. And an unboxing of crochet hooks. Exciting. I'm holding up um, a triangle shawl that's mostly red and white, like in, in blocks of color going across, like big stripes kind of, and also a little bit of gray and black. And then it has, and it's it's a skull pattern, not the Lost Souls one. It's a different one by, I think the pattern's in a different language, but there's also an English version, and I'll try to link that one. Um, or I, I will link the post where it is. And I added s s snowflakes, which are always kind of droopy, but I was like, yeah, I'll just add add these for my for my god of winter and death because that's who this is for Gwen I'm just like yeah skulls and s s snowflakes this is my vocational slash journey shawl um my other finished object is stuck underneath the wheels of my chair. It took 
me six months to do this. It's a wrap skirt, kind of, based on the Minoan kilts and Minoan art. I'm scared to even try describing this, but it is huge and full of color work. Very bright colors, lots of geometric patterns. Like, if you know anything about the um, murals at Knossos in Crete, it's kind of inspired by that, um, at least in parts. This lace um, was meant to look like a line of birds from that you see from from above, and you kind of look at them down as they fly, and they each share a wing. Oops, I bumped the microphone. But it came out looking like a line of, da of dancers, too, like people with their hands up, clasping hands. So that's cool, because the god who I... A couple of the faces who I know, the, the, the faces of Gwyn that I, I experience in the Minoan path, he has a lot of different faces for for me at least these the um these different gods may be separate for other people that's fine but i'm just going by what he he wants me he's told me that he wants me to view him or them as but some of his minoan faces are all about dancing and birds or both so that seemed fitting um Ooh, and now my whips. And now another one is stuck on a different part of my chair. This was an FO on Halloween because I kind of clipped a, one of those spiderweb fabrics to the wings. The, to the sleeves as kind of drapey sleeves lo looked a bit like wings. But I decided it's really hard to to wear, like it's so complicated to figure out where my head and arm goes with that, so I wanna just finish it as a cardigan. It's a black lace with some white edging and various lace-up bits. Um, Basically a vest right now, but I want to add sleeves and um, maybe attach the front panels to the back panel. Well, the front panels are currently much longer than the back panel. I was just kind of making it up as I went, just like doing different lace stitches that I either came up with or found, because that's how I roll. <laughs> And, um, yeah. Second whip, ah yes. I'm excited about this one. It's my first actual cardigan and my first granny square pattern. Um, based on the, the constructions based on the one, the Granny Square pattern by Kayla from Alt Knots, my current favorite YouTube channel. So, cheers if you're watching this. Now I can return the favor of all the cheers. Thank you. because there needs to be more spooky crochet in the world. And if I design patterns, they will also be spooky crochet, so. Sorry about that, my phone reached the maximum file size for video. Well, it's one of those things you, oh, I'm gonna, one of those things I'm gonna have to learn more about as I go, now that I'm YouTubing. So, yeah, we were talking about the Granny Square cardigan. I made my own Granny Square 
for this because I wanted it to look like a certain symbol that's important in my Minoan path. Um, and it's supposed to look like the sun cross in red and then covered in, uh, then sur surrounded by black yarn for the rest of the square. The sun cross is like a linear A symbol, it's like a circle with the plus inside. And um, I have a bunch. It fell. <laughs> I make a bunch of these tiny like donut hole things first and then add the black yarn. So I'm working on the sleeves right now. So that's just the sun cross by itself. Um, but <laughs> one time I was trying to do one more before I took a nap. And then I did the whole thing and realized I'd only done three spokes and realized, yeah, it's time for a nap. <laughs> I was like, huh, that's why it was cupping, or like, curving weirdly like that. That was funny, so I kept that one. Um, right, I was gonna try the cardigan on for you, what I have so far. I think it looks very striking with all the black and red and just I intentionally used red yarn for the mattress stitch between each panel so that it would stand out. And it fits pretty well. Very excited. Right now, Crochet hook unboxing time, or unpackaging. I bought this from Etsy, and it got here today, so I'm like, oh, well, I'm going to film a podcast. May as well open it on camera. It's some hooks from... I I, I forget the, the Etsy shop's name, but it's like PB Boutique, I think. I'm, I'm, I'm going to put it in the down below, but like... They, they make really awesome galaxy themed hooks, so sorry for the crinkling. I got like a 4, 4.5, 5, or f and 5.5 or something like that. I, I got three somewhere in that mid-range. Oh, this is, this is the, the name, um, PJB Boutique. Oh, they have a crochet hook care card. Um, keep out of mouth. Got it. I will not chew on my crochet hook. And this is the... A uh, little shop card. Don't know if it's focusing, but um, so apparently these these all might be a bit different. Like they're all like galaxy themed, but you don't know exactly what you're getting. So it's kind of like a Hubble Space Telescope gra grab bag. That's that's my words, not yeah. I'm a space nerd. First of all, whatever size this is, ooh, 5.5. I love 5.5. Oh, look at this. This color of blue, first of all, always brings me to tears because it reminds me of one of the goddesses I worship, and she just has that effect. Like, it's practically shared gnosis by now. She's just like, 
it's like thinking of someone you just love so much. Um, I know her as Terasia, the the sun mother in the Minoan paganism um, tradition, or she also comes to me as um, Inanna or Ishtar, and a few other names. Um, so I consider like really intense blues sacred to her, which I think is based on historical stuff. But I'm just like, yes, it's Sun Mom. That's what I call her. She's also the mother of Gwen's Minoan face in in that tradition. So he has several mother goddesses he's introduced me to. So I'm like, oh, sure. So, so, so many moms, all the moms. Yes. Um, got that divine feminine queen energy. Right. Crochet hooks. <laughs> Ooh. This is the five. It's a gold hook with like more of a darker mid blue and black midnight sky. Ooh. I don't know if I described the 5.5 with the blue hook, but it's like, it's this gorgeous, intense sky blue, but a, a bit darker than sky, but just like, then there's um, purple and blue and black on the ergonomic handle. That's what I like about these. They're ergonomic handles. So I wanted hooks that were pretty and had the handle that will help me crochet longer because I, yes, I want to crochet all day and not have to worry about my tendon problems. More crackling, sorry. Ooh, and the six, that was the other one I got. It's also gold and, well, the hook is gold. But the handle portion is a little bit of a darker midnight blue with some light pinkish purple and black, all sparkly. I've realized that I love s sparkly things, galaxy themed things. Like these are, since goth is such a huge um, aesthetic, I'm like, yeah, I, I, I love sparkly things. I love stars. Not like the shape star, but just like star spatter and glitter. Um, I love lace. I make it ornate and um, intricate. I love black roses. So, yeah. And I love these hooks. So check him out like that i'm i'm not officially affiliated with this shop or anything but i am i'm very just on f first glance i'm very happy with these these hooks and they feel great in my hand like w when i was holding them up to you and Let's see, besides the yarn chat, so craftiness, yes, I crochet. Um, I make music, as I said earlier. Um, my instruments are singing and piano, so that's what my current albums have been. Um, I have some previous albums that are instrumental with lots of different instruments because I was composing using a program that let me write the music and then the computer would play it. I think that that one's Muse score. Yeah. And I, I, I do love those too, but like there's something about being able to just play with my human hands and voice and just like put in the ex, um, expressiveness. Although it does take more practice since I can't play it perfectly every time because I'm not a uh, um, the computer. Um, I also do art, as I mentioned, pixel art, other digital art. 
um, writing both nonfiction, like my blog, and I also write a lot of poetry. And I have a fantasy story in the works, which I'm going to turn into a webcomic. And that's, I've been working on this whole epic mythos since I was 13, so it's been in, it's been brewing for a while. <laughs> waiting for um, someone's in, in the other room, so we're just going to take a coffee break. Crinkle, crinkle, crinkle. Put it down where it hopefully won't crinkle anymore. <laughs> so I'm going to put these hooks safely on my table back here. And I did want to tell a story. I know it's getting onto an hour, but like, maybe I can just touch on it. Um, I'll, I'll put the links to the two places where I told the story in verbal, in, in written form. But it's the story of how I met Gwen. And I think for right now, I'm just, I'm just going to focus on one interaction, which was the, the night I actually realized, yeah, this is who I've been talking to, because I knew him as the, the, the horned god. I was, I was Wiccan at the time. But I, I thought that I was keeping the god I knew as Gwyn Apneith at arm's length, because I had met him one Halloween previously, and it, it was great. Like, we did some great work. I wrote a song. But I was like, this is really intense. Can, can we just pause? And so he, he was like, okay, sure. And <laughs> he didn't seem happy about it, but he, he, he did. And then I just went back to work, working with the, the horned god, doing my, my, my thing. But I was like, huh, it's weird. Sometimes he reminds me of that, that one god I met on Halloween, the, the Welsh one. Huh, because... They're both fairy kings, and like sometimes the, the sometimes the horned god appeared to me as a fairy king, and I was like, that doesn't make sense in most Wiccan contexts. But sure, I'm here for it. Um, <laughs> most Wiccan contexts that I knew at the time, and and I was like, huh, he reminds me a lot of Gwyn, but he's but but Gwyn was scary, and he I I was afraid that he might be mad at me, like if I if I messed up, which is not true, but like at the time I was like, I don't know, he might be in, impatient and grim and, and my horned god is nice. Like he'll, he'll sit with me when I'm having a bad time and just be really kind and sweet. And also like has this, tw has a twinkle in his eye and a sense of humor. And so I was like, no, it, it can't be Gwen. But I kept thinking, but it reminds me of him. And I was like, no, no, it can't be. And it, it felt like it was slowly creeping up on me, <laughs> like a hunter, almost, <laughs> or a hunter god. And so, right, <laughs> this is the part where I, just making sure I have a reference point for the part I'm going to tell now. I have my blog open on my laptop over here. So I one one night I was writing in my journal and I was like, yeah, the horned god was in that form that reminds me of man, I I'd better make sure I know how to spell his name cuz he he might get mad at me if if I misspell his name. Like that was the thought that kind of whispered into my head. So I Google searched his name. 
and I think he was using that in order to get me to to look <laughs> to use that Google search, even though I don't think he would have been mad. But it it was a, a it was the tool he had to get me to face him at the time, and and I did correctly spell his name. But the, one of the first results that came was um, the blog I mentioned before um, by, um, sorry, I stutter on her name when I say, when I say it out loud, Lor Lorna S S Smithers, Sp the S consonant blends at the beginning of words. I, I'm, I'm. I'm better now than I was as as a younger person, but it was they're really hard. But um, and it, and it's not the fault of anyone really. It's just how my brain and mouth work. But um, so I found her blog, and I was like, oh, this is cool. I I love devotional blogs, even if they're not about gods that I personally know, and this is not one of those because I don't know Gwen. But um. I'm, I'm just going to read it and see, see what happens. And I started reading and I was like, huh, her, her personal experiences with Gwen are a lot like my personal experiences with this fairy king horned god person. And also, they're nothing like the Gwen that I was afraid of encountering. Um... So at that point, in my mind's eye, like, and usually when I talk about seeing a god or hearing a god, I, I mean like in in my mind's eye or ear. But I I saw the horned god in that form as the fairy king, and I I just have to say how how he usually looks in this form to me. It's he has real he's very tall and thin. He has long white hair and he's dressed in black and just has this twinkle in his eye. So just imagine that standing in my room as I was reading on on my laptop and sitting on 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 my bed and he was just like watching like he was waiting for something. And I and I was like, "Wait. I'm not ready for this t to be you. Can you hold on?" Because I was pretty sure it would be him, but I was like, "No, I'm I'm not ready. I'm just going to keep keep reading." So he held on. And the nail in the coffin was um, when I read something um, that Lorna had written about the dialogue of this. It, it's this text called the dialogue of Gwydno Garan here and Gwynapneith, or might might be reversed. No, that that actually is according to my blog post. But that that is the correct order of the names. Um, and Gwynno Garan here ad, um, addresses Gwyn Apneith and describes him as indisposed to anger, to to anger, and blameless and pure in pro protecting life. And I was like, "Wow, that's exactly opposite of what I was afraid of. Like that he'd be quick to anger, but this even the lore." much less my gnosis and this other person's gnosis is saying and indisposed to anger. And also that he's a pure-hearted and good protector. So, and it is interesting, like that note about protecting life, I have found, and, and I've talked to many other he people who've had this experience, that Gwyn's very involved in saving our lives, which is... Um, interesting because he's we we know we know him as a death god and a psych like a um, psychopomp and lord of the dead type deity, but also like he he helps people um, who aren't supposed to die yet. So. And it helps them not do that. So that's 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 cool. Um, anyway, so <laughs> I saw this, and I, by now I, I was I was sitting on my on my bed and just like leaning over my my laptop screen, and I 
I knew he was no longer standing in the middle of the room several feet away. He was like right next to me sitting, like sitting next to me, like looking at me with it, with a side smile, like, hmm. <laughs> like he, he knew, like he was very, he knew I was about to <laughs> crack or something. He was very happy about it, but like in a really friendly, kind way, it wasn't like adversarial. <laughs> But I kind of muttered, like, this is you, isn't it? <laughs> and I thought he he would have said something like, oh, yes, it is I. Or, like, I didn't expect my, e even though I got phone a lot, I didn't, it's not always completely, it's not always crystal clear and um, immediate and also sur surprising which it it was all three of those, which is one, part of my discerning process for like, is it a thought from my own head or like that I heard from my um, gods? So um, when, when he said, after I asked him, this is you, isn't it? <laughs> he went, yeah. Like, like the feeling was, it's taken you a while, hasn't it? <laughs> and then I was like, wait, You've been going up need this whole time, like two years, and you didn't tell me. And he just looked at me like, I don't know what to um, tell you, dude. Like it, it was, it was that kind of ex ex expression which I've learned to recognize as him going. What the the assumption you're making isn't correct, or 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 like you're, like there's there's something you're not getting. <laughs> But he's kind of in a in a bind because he can't really answer the question that I'm asking because it doesn't really apply. Anyway, that's that's what I got from the expression later looking at it because I realized he had tried to tell me <laughs> many times and I was like, no, it can't be him. No. <laughs> so, yeah, that was how I met Gwen Apneev in July of 2019. And then, yes, yeah, so a few months later, I was dedicating to him for for life because I I knew, like, at that point, I was just like, oh, my God, you're the one I've been looking for my whole life. There were, like, sparks of lightning between us. My soul recognized and... Sorry, I bumped into something. My soul recognized and loved him, and it was terrifying, but also... Ex um, exhilarating and wonderful and like I was I was freaking out for several weeks slash months afterwards but also at some point I was like okay I'm still on the emotional roller coaster but I also know what I need to do so I, I gotta get to work preparing and there was a lot of intense pr preparation since I was taking lifelong vows but I'm so glad I've done it and I've 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 never regretted it ever since then mind you I'm not saying that it's for everyone to do like I had to do a lot of soul searching do I like do I want to do this can I trust what what I want can I trust Gwen there was a lot of communication between us a lot of um inner work healing my trauma and stuff and that was really hard it was basically like therapy slash meditation like you know it was basically shadow work I think that I think that's probably a good term but yeah just if if you're going to do something like that you know more more power to you just make sure that it's because you want it and not because you think it's what a pagan should do that's my that's my takeaway also that's how I met Gwen and it's hard to say when exactly we met because there are so many points the story could begin, but that's when I was like, oh shit, this is who I've been talking to. This is his name. And I, I felt that connection switch on like an electric current. It had been there before, but not as strong. And now it was just like, zoom. <laughs> like when they... They animate on um, the elect, um, like color, colorful electricity, 
going um, between two points, like kind of sizzling. It was it was like that. <laughs> so yeah, that was that's my story for today. I'm I may have a story next time, but also I have another unboxing planned because I have two tarot decks that I have not opened because I just haven't had the um the energy to be um excited about a new thing <laughs> like I I do love them I just haven't opened them yet so I thought well I could just do that on on camera and um that will be hopefully next week because I I'd, I'd like to do this weekly at least for a while I figure that's good for the algorithm and also I'm really excited about this so may as well start strong. I don't know if I'll continue weekly forever but for for, for right now at least. Also I'll have to see how much work this is in post. <laughs> Trying not to edit too much because I'm very new at this so I don't want to create too much work for myself. Also I really enjoy the like more casual unedited style of things where you can just hang out with someone if I were listening to this, I would probably be crocheting, so I hope you're doing something fun like that. Or I'd be playing Love Nikki Dress Up Queen. It's a phone game. <laughs> you collect you collect pretty clothes and um fight a war started by high treason because it's a really intense dress up game. Um and right so i will i will put my link tree of other places to find me i think i put i th i think i basically mentioned most of them earlier um the one i i, I remember skipping earlier was my society 6 which has at this point it's mostly either old older um non pixel digital art which which is still good it's just old <laughs> like i mean i um i still like it it's just in my a style i don't currently do though i i would like to get back to that style but then the other thing that's on there which is what's making me smile is all my sketches that i've done on my phone of gwen just portraits and stuff just I have this one app where I'll just like sit there and like with 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 my finger just like doodle just to to get myself back into the art mode and I'm always drawing him on there so <laughs> yeah <laughs> I am <laughs> my my friends have ad adopted the term partly from me but also like as a community which is awesome <laughs> the term gay um, gay, gay for Gwyn, which I love. It certainly just describes me. Um, I support anyone who wants to use that term <laughs> of any gender or, um, orientation. I'll, I can talk more about this later, but like my experience with Gwyn is him just being a very queer god, both in sexuality and gender and presentation. Also like very wide range of things he can be or present as not just in gender but in terms of nature <laughs> like he's ice oh now he's fire now he's the moon now he's the sun he's just all over the place in the best way i love him so much so on that happy note i'm gonna cheers you like, cheers one more time with my Cracker Barrel Mermaid. I didn't mention this before, and, and now I'm willing to bring her closer to the camera because I've drank some coffee, but look at that. She's sculpted out of the cup. It's like porcelain or ceramic, and she's kind of looking away with her arm raised and her hair down her back, but like... Her back is like, and her hair is like a little bit 3D, which is really cool. 
Oh, that's what she's doing. She's holding a starfish. And there's like a... It's like a watercolor effect and the f a f French word in cursive. You know, that, that kind of style. I don't know what the French word is. But I, I used to have a lot of those t-shirts. They were kind of watercolor faded with like a collage and then some French words. And it was all very fancy. This was when I was a teenage... I'm going to say girl. Don't like... I'm the only one that's allowed to call me my previous self a girl. But, like, that's what I was presenting as. <laughs> anyway, so thank you so much for chilling with me for over an hour. I like long YouTube videos and podcasts, so I hope that you liked it too. And, and that you enjoyed this. Let me know any thoughts you had, especially... If you're nice about it, you know, leave leave me a comment, subscribe, like, um, you know, leave me some thoughts on what you'd like to see next. Like, I'd be happy to hear about that, you know, maybe where I got this, like, how this scythe came into my life, or who that sheep is back there that's um, wearing a pink, sh she's right there. She's wearing a pink cloak that I crocheted and a little red bonnet, and I could show her next time if, if you want. It's what the people want. So, anyway, I'm going to turn this off now because it's after 11 p.m. where I am. Because this is the only time when I can film late at night. <laughs> so, um, hope that you have a good night or day, and I will see you next time.